Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Student Life Podcast. Uh, today's episode is a Blue Monday special, which is we'll be covering the jigsaw framework for five a day for mental health. Um, I'm joined by a luxurious and illustrious uh, panel today of the student experience team, where we'll be discussing everything we've experienced around mental health um, and I suppose coping with the college life along with the struggles of the Irish weather and the winter season so uh, there'll be a good discussion around how you can use the five a day for mental health um, framework to I suppose overcome the challenges around Blue Monday and we'll be discovering more about the I suppose struggles that students deal with during this uh, period during their time in college so we hope that the outcomes that you take away from today uh, will help you be better equipped to uh, I suppose manage the the challenge of college life and all the different struggles associated with that but um we'll I'll say we'll dive into today's episode and we'll uh, look more into the uh, jigsaw model for five a day for mental health so um before we kick off I, I, I'll probably pull uh, Nisha and Hamza into the conversation uh, early on um I suppose to maybe inform people of what Blue Monday is you guys have been well Hamza particularly yourself you've been working there for uh, a number of years now what is Blue Monday for, for the students who maybe don't know uh, what it is yeah, well, it was kind of new for me as well. Uh, I wasn't really sure what Blue Monday was until I actually started working here myself. Uh, but there is a lovely little formula which Nisha will uh, kind of go through with us. But how we kind of term Blue Monday is it's seen as statistically the most, quote unquote, depressing day of the year. Uh, statistically, not like, you know, uh, in the prime, <laughs> it's not the best real estate calendar wise because mm-hmm. you're just after the Christmas slump. Um, you're just kind of, you know, off the big celebration you're on the wind down and there's nothing really coming up close uh in terms of celebrations the weather is not that great you may not be doing this so well funds wise after christmas and new years and all the partying and all that stuff so um yeah statistically they say it is the day where you're going to be kind of at your lowest uh, mm. when it comes to your mental health mm. Yeah, the kind of the way they calculate it is you're financially drained after the holidays. Mm. You're, you're feeling bad about all the food you've eaten. Um, <laughs> it's the longest distance from Christmas until your next uh, joyous occasion. Mm. Um, the weather is bad, but this kind of only applies in the Northern Hemisphere. So yeah. you're lucky you're here. <laughs> um, yeah, and so it's we getting get dark experience. pretty early as well. Yeah, like it's, it's dark cold. at like five o'clock and the weather is <laughs> yeah. damp and cold. And yeah, so the, the outlook is pretty bleak is that yes yeah, yeah. so maybe if you want to move somewhere warmer that would solve all the problems yeah, yeah. but uh, like, maybe to add to that as well like it is kind of funny in a sense that it's the first day of term so actually like nearly it might hit some students a bit later because the first week is always so exciting you're always kind of there's a I think you get a new lease of energy in a sense that there's like so much optimism about going back to class, seeing your friends. Some students coming here for the first time, they're making new friends, new experiences in, 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 a, in a new country. So they might get the Blue Monday a bit later. Like that whole sense of, I'm not going to say sadness, but like the, the energy around it that maybe gets you in this kind of little negative vortex or whatnot. Yeah, I'd say for college students, it's a little bit different because they're finished their exams by Blue Monday. So that's kind of fun. And they have yeah. a lot to look forward to. Mm. Actually, yeah. Sorry, some of the exams are finished soon. So, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to, like, kind of, you know, overwhelm you and take over your whole life. It's one of those things where you like we've obviously put a little bit of a label on it and it's become a thing a talking point for us but it doesn't mean that you have to be upset that day uh it's just kind of like okay well if you are we don't want you to think that oh it's just happening to you and you know this is something that you you could experience and a lot of people could be experiencing it and that's the purpose of us kind of doing this podcast is that to let you know that it is okay and there is help out there and we're going to talk about some of those things as to what you can do to have a better Blue Monday and then you know in time uh, you can incorporate that throughout the rest of the week as well and do other mm. things to kind of for your own well-being and mental health okay. and I suppose um, I might come to maybe some of the rest of the panel here as well um, is it okay for like, like what Hamza is saying there is it okay to feel at any stage during the semester and um, maybe even early on 
excitement's going on but maybe you're not feeling right not necessarily you've got a mental health issue or anything else but but is it okay to feel a bit I don't know what's going on and my energy's off or my focus is not great or whatever it might be is yeah I think so 100% um and I think it's interesting because I think sometimes when you're in the middle mm. of the year, because a lot of, you know, there's freshers week um, and you'd think it's kind of aimed towards the first years. And then there's a lot of extra sports for the final years going to the mm. thesis. So I think sometimes second years or if you're in your fourth year, four year course, it could be second and third years. You can feel a bit like, oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, like no man's land. And mm. um, that really isn't the case. And I think it's fair to say that everyone is going to have a down day at some point or other and like you said it doesn't mean that you have a mental health issue mm. it literally as cringy as it sounds it just means you're human yeah. like you're you cannot be happy every single day of your life yeah. if you are that could be a problem in itself yeah. um but no it's it's absolutely okay to not feel okay as mm. the as the saying goes um but i think ironically actually blue monday last year was my favorite day of the year wow. it was just so much fun which i think is really cool that um as a college we try so hard to kind of twist the twist t- turn the tables on mm. the day it's supposed to be the saddest day and it was so much fun we had the balloons we went for the walk we listened to music on the speaker um and it was a highlight of my year last year which i think is um it's a pretty funny juxtaposition when you think about it yeah. um but no to answer your question it's definitely i think everyone has down days and it's it's perfectly normal and i'd say like the energy on campus is always good during that week <clears throat> particularly the blue monday in itself uh the, the first day of campus it's there's so much excitement and you can really feel the energy off 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 the you know off the walls of everyone being here um but i suppose like my, my question is like maybe people might battle with it more at home when they're more isolated or maybe they're not in ideal accommodation or whatever the circumstances might be that might be a bigger challenge um like like how might students maybe cope with that maybe perhaps I might go to Iona or like outside of campus because all the excitement is here but if, if it's not the same um, you know when they're at home like, like what's yeah. your advice maybe um, to... I think it's easy to feel <clears throat> down as well if you just stay in your home and mm. if you are in student accommodation you, like you just have your room um, so mm. it's easy to feel isolated and to isolate yourself so just reaching out going outside maybe um, talking to friends meeting people outside you don't have to spend money you can just <laughs> go yeah. and breathe fresh air yeah um, that does a trick I think so um, just kind of practical steps you can yeah yeah and particularly people in different time zones like the families mm-hmm. are you know they're new to the college or whatever and you know, if, if, if the f- people in different different countries they, that can be quite mm-hmm. isolating when you're at home and maybe you're out so you're not in student accommodation maybe you're living with mm. a host family and that can be you know disconnected with them in that sense you know it can be tough oh. um yeah so maybe I, I might come back to Nisha there uh just for an update so what what have we got lined up for for, for mental health week so obviously it's an important week in our calendar what can students expect um starting on blue monday we have a walk where everyone's welcome there'll be music balloons like emer said which said it was her favorite activity <laughs> highlight <laughs> yeah <laughs> who doesn't love a balloon <laughs> um and then after a lovely walk uh back to the common room for some tea and coffee and you can get to meet some new people mm. or some old people um then <laughs> you're, you're referring to me there you? so just gonna... <laughs> i didn't want to say it and <laughs> um, yeah and then on to tuesday there's a connect cafe where you can kind of put away your phone get to know new people have some nice uh, fruit and some croissants and some tea and coffee and just meet people mm. um and then on wednesday we have a visit from jigsaw our partners that we're raising money for this year and they're going to come in and set up a stand and we also have um a vision board thing on thursday where you can learn how to set goals and make Mm. vision boards and then we have some other stuff throughout the week as well just scattered in yeah Yeah. (laughs) stacked stacked for events and 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 some prizes loads for the students to, to you know to enjoy um well, brilliant. But look, I suppose a nice intro there to what, um, you know, Blue Monday is and, you know, what it's about and, you know, the struggles that students have. Um, I do kind of want to dive into our, you know, the main point of this and we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the 
the framework that Jigsaw have, because Jigsaw are an agency who look after adolescents, I think from 18 to 25, I think, is it, for mental health? I think uh, younger acute, than that, even young adults. Know, under ages. Yeah. Below, is it below 18 or below I think 25? So. Yeah. Uh, I know they work with all the colleges anyway, um, but they do fantastic work and they, they used to come in to deliver workshops with us, um, with our students. And the five a day for mental health is like a, it's like a, a training program, but it's I think it's one of the best ones out there in terms of having a framework for people to follow. And I'll kind of run through it kind of briefly for, for everyone to understand a bit more. And then we may have a, a bit of a discussion on, on, on each of them. So um, they're model is basically based on, on five pillars which is connecting with others, it's being active, it's taking notice, it's continuing to learn and it's giving forward as well. So I think they're really um you know important aspects. So um I, 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 I suppose starting with the connecting with others like uh, I think that's hugely hugely important and if um like if people are to you know to follow these principles I think there's a lot left in 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 terms of how they can improve um you know their own well-being their own I suppose self-satisfaction their own value their own outlook their own actions I think there's easy steps there for everyone to follow that are no cost they're of no um you know high end of resource for anyone to do and you know they're, they're very very simple so just uh, we might have a discussion just around what they describe each of the pillars of and um, some of the actions they recommend and then i might pull you guys into uh, maybe score yourselves some yeah from one to five one being absolutely terrible um i've no understanding of what it is i don't practice it and um, to five i've tip in I, I would be you know maybe uh, practicing it on, a, on maybe a daily basis and uh, see where we're at. So we might have our own improvement plans by the end. I know Emer's looking very nervous. <laughs> so um, so Jigsaw have on their website that connecting with others is their first pillar. So our relationships with other people are, are, are fundamental to their sense of well-being and happiness. So close relationships with family and friends can yield love, support and a sense of meaning in our lives. I think that's hugely important too. So of course the wider social networks give a sense of belonging and it helps us foster our relationships and make new connections and so on. So this is all stimulated from conversations with people that we have and helps people share the difficulties and so and so forth. So basically you're having two-way communication with, with those people around you. And also when people become disconnected, um, that becomes more challenging, Become particularly with we're seeing with mobile devices, we're seeing it with screen time, we're seeing it every day in the common room. People would rather be on TikTok alone than have a conversation with someone there and our very the fabric of our very being is to the sense of belonging and you know having these minimal conversations is what gives us energy and gives us I suppose more meaning to our lives and I think that's missing particularly with the younger people um now more than ever but simple ways for people to connect these guys invite a friend or a colleague out to lunch have you know, in a practical sense, having lunch with someone here in the canteen, and um, yeah, you know, and maybe in a local cafe, pick up the phone, okay, and have a FaceTime with someone, maybe a family or friend, or you know, having a text conversation. I know that's more popular with younger people now more than ever. Um, but making a point of telling your family about three good things that are going on in your life and asking them for what good is going on in their life. And I think that's a really positive outlook. Um, so connect with us. I'm going to go over to Ryan and Abby, you were here beside me. Um, give you a, first of all, score yourself between one to five on how, I suppose, how much quality you would connect with others around you being it can be friends or family but just a general score five being i would connect meaningfully with no distractions with the people and make it you know that i love and want to spend time on a regular basis say let's say daily i'd say five personally five, for myself okay. um in terms of being engaged with the people that are there around me like family or friends even with the phone i'd I always comment on it sometimes. My phone is either face down to show that person that I'm fully engaged. Mm. I find when the, someone's phone is flipped the other way and the screen's up, they're not fully engaged with me and I can sense it. Mm. So I would like to give the opposite message to the person to show my phone's down, my phone's away, I'm giving you my attention. Yeah. This is my time to connect with you and actually listen to what you have to say. And um, would you go your way to make a... 
like a dinner date with someone or meet them at a cafe or meet them, meet them for a pint or whatever it yeah. might be um, it could be f- physical like an example recently like one of my best friends has moved halfway across the world he's 13 hours ahead time zone but yet we're still finding that time to make time with each other to pick up and FaceTime each other we're not mm-hmm. letting that distance separate us the 13 hour difference <laughs> in our day separate us we actively want to make time for each other to have a conversation and mm-hmm. check up on each other to make sure we're still connected despite the physical difference Mm. and you kind of touched on something like asking people how they're getting on something that we actively would do as a family at home at dinner time is we talk about our pits and peaks of the week so Mm. we go around our family of six at dinner and we always ask each other and we listen and we talk about each other's pits and peaks Mm. and we do that actively so I'd say that's why I give myself like a five on the scale I'm always actively engaged with what I'm Mm. conversing and staying connected with people I think that's really important is actually sharing the positive stories as well I don't know probably something I don't do well enough I would would just go on with my day and I wouldn't maybe talk about the positive things or the negative things that happened that day and people actually like when you share things and actually to receive your information of where you're at I don't know if you guys have had any or would agree or disagree or have any experiences of anyone maybe sharing or not sharing or whatever or do, do you think it's important or uh, like what that like sounds like even your housemates maybe I know you're in shared accommodation with, with your housemates would you connect with them that they're people you live with or um, is it something that you would actively do or maybe they're not in your network per se because of your your role here and there's so many people <laughs> you know at your, at your pulling at you to you know connect with um, yeah that actually is something I've I have noticed is um I don't I don't know I don't know my roommates that well I, we do mm. talk but it, it's mostly it's it's the onus is on me because I'm gone early in the morning and then I'm back at eight yeah. or nine o'clock in the evening at yeah. the earliest kind of thing so I don't really see them mm. um, but I do try and chat and say hello um and generally I have found that they're they're eager to say hello obviously you want to know the person who's living in the room next door to you it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of weird if you don't mm. um, but we have a group chat so if there's any anything major like actually this was a funny story but you could look at it negatively but I thought it was quite funny I was like cooking shock in the kitchen the other day and the tap exploded like I'm not even kidding exploded like, like the, the like valve went off and it was literally like something from a movie and the water was spraying everywhere and I didn't like I had my back from the sink because I was filling up my water bottle but I was like what is that noise and I turned <laughs> around and the place was drenched no and it was genuinely like spraying at me and i was trying to get in to the turn it off you can't turn the water pressure off you can't stop that no, like it was um foreign. but i managed it maintenance fixed it the next morning so it was fine but i connected with my roommates because i messaged them and i was like hey guys don't use we the tap drown. on the left <laughs> <laughs> sorry i oh, flooded we just the place got a swimming pool installed in the kitchen if you want to come in it's for a, a new dip. water feature um <laughs> but uh, uh yeah so that was a fun story yeah you know it could have been bad i was mm. kind of irritated i t- took it as a slight sign to not cook and just order food but mm. no I, I did actually but um, one thing that's interesting on that and like coming back to ryan and to merge those two stories there is that uh, well, two points is that uh, you kind of you may be different strands like your family time and like relationships and friends and then you have different friends from school and college and mm-hmm. they're all like kind of valves that go up and down and they, you, you could be scoring yourself a five out of five with your college friends and yeah maybe you know one out of five with your like your maybe your your your, your childhood friends mm-hmm. uh, or you know, maybe not spending enough time with your family uh, and so forth and I don't know does anyone like uh, has anyone battling with that or maybe uh, ever considered that to kind of say like you could be doing well with your friends but actually you know you, you might need to turn the dial down on that and put a cap on that to maybe connect with others um, mm-hmm. outside of I think I think I'm like that I'm I'm very good I think in like with the people who are around me at that mm. time but um I'm not good with my phone, for example. Like, I'm really good at WhatsApping people and video calling. But if you text me, I will forget. And I will, well, or I'll start a conversation and I'll forget. And that's really hard for me because my part of my friends and my um, childhood friends mm. are in France. So, so phone, yeah. yeah, so that's that's been a real problem for me to yeah. have to consciously try to keep contact yeah. even though like if i go back in the summer and we meet up like it's as if nothing had ever changed but it's the yeah. having to keep communicating for me is a task mm. to like via I text think you need to like, just in a practical sense i nearly think a five scoring yourself a five in some area is actually a negative yeah in a sense that like you need to be 
I don't know if it's even possible to be a four in all of them. Like if you're mm. talking family, child or friends, college friends and mm. work yeah. friends, whatever it might be, that you probably need to be a, f a three or a, and a four in all of them to kind of be rounded, like, you know, because mm. something has to give if you're if if, if you're all in with everyone and every day. It's like, well, what are you getting done? Like, you yeah. know, so I, I, I think the main point there is don't be too hard on yourself if you feel like you're not maybe connecting with someone, is be, you know, yeah. because yeah. it means you're all in with someone else and maybe you need to, mm. you know, make time for, for, for others or other things because mm. it means you're maybe it, working really it, it's hard. It's complicated because you have to make a lot of time for yeah. for quality. It's um, tough, yeah. yeah. It's a resource. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like you're scoring a five, man. So that's like, have you maybe, like, teaches uh, your ways? Yeah, teaches. It's <laughs> more <laughs> so. I, I think it's more so though. Like, it's not about a, a, a five at what cost, and that's probably the. It's um, it's a five in terms of staying like in the contact with people in general. Yes, there be times where you could have a childhood friend that it's mm. a little lower one week, and your family is up higher. Like especially over yeah. Christmas, like <clears> when I time off from work like all my siblings were off school my mum's teacher off school so everyone was in the house it was a five for three weeks mm. but now everyone's going back so it might be down to a three but yeah. it's been raised back with people that are like work colleagues work friends people that are around like the area I'm in but I think it's always staying in contact with someone is the key thing of trying not to obviously yes you want your own time and your own down space that's important too mm. but staying in contact with whether it's a friend a family member yeah. a loved one it you're always staying in some form yeah. of contact, contact that you're not you're limiting your options to feel lonely okay. and alone <laughs> but look I think there's some practical things on the campus anyway there's a great canteen here as well there's great cafes bars around the around the city as well so maybe the takeaways here for this one being connected is to is to take time whether it's a classmate, whether it's someone you haven't seen in a while, whether it's, you know, as simple as FaceTime back home or even just making a point to, you know, to have a have a, a meal with someone or a hot drink or whatever it might be. Um, and I think the big thing is maybe limiting your distractions with your phone there, whatever it might be, when you're on the, in having the conversation with them and being present as best we can. I'd yeah. say it's like quality and not quantity. So you could see someone once a month or once a year and they could still be a greater relationship because of how you establish your relationships you don't have to see them every day mm. so like you don't need to connect with everyone all the time so it's about managing the relationship and what you mm. and the other person need in that relationship stuff yeah i agree um okay so the the the, the second point here is 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 being active um super important um I, I, i'm sure that goes without saying exercise is good for your overall physical and mental health some people um you know definitely the word exercise can be awful and they think they've been sweaty in the gym and you know feeling like they have a red face or like whatever that might be but it doesn't have to necessarily be in that it can be or it doesn't have to be competitive team sports or anything it can be as simple as you know finding something that you, you feel belong to whether it be like a, a walking group it can be um adding to alleviate stress even simple as kind of gardening or um you know their chores around the house so um but Definitely, I know myself anyway, I've been an advocate. Exercise does help me sleep. I know when I don't, I feel more restless, I feel more stress, I feel, um, you know, less energy and focus and things like that. So, um, Jigsaw are recommending taking a walk in nature, going out with friends and connecting so you can kill two birds at one stone. So, you know, meet a family member for, for a walk, maybe one of the evening times, um, taking notice of your surroundings, um, and you can, you know, chalk off a couple of the uh, five a day, um, walking to school. Emma, you're you're, uh, you're I think you're only you're <laughs> only active commuter here in the team, um, which is great. So uh, can I please just can I please interject? She does take the bus sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, sorry. Can now, I, can I just justify this, please? Can I, I will yeah. walk into college. I I will walk into college as much as I can, <clears throat> but I do I don't I don't walk um home. Because it's dark and I get nervous That's walking okay. home, so That's I'm okay. not going to take this teasing. And it's but dark I, in the morning as well, I would say. So yeah, yeah, I'm not in that early. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Um, it says dancing, turning on your favorite songs, and dancing. Although I don't like the murder music on the dance floor, murder on the dance floor, and guarding and other non-sporty ways to exercise. Um, and you also get 
lovely flowers at the end of it too. We won't talk about Iona's tomatoes um, that she bought. It's still it's growing. It's still growing. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, can I just jump in there about that the going for the walk thing? And it's something that uh, I remember like a couple of years ago when I was saying it to students like, oh, go for a walk or we're going to organize this um, as, as a group to go for a walk. And people always came back with, I find walks boring. They're like, what do I do on the walk? It's like, I find it boring. Or it's like, I get, not that they get physically tired, but I feel like people, they don't really have an action plan when they go for a walk. And what I mean is like, you're not going out just for shopping, but like, are you going out there to kind of think through your thoughts, to be alone with your thoughts, to kind of, you know, clear your head or to just be alone with yourself? Like, so having the right mindset when you go for a walk and you're trying to be active is also really important as well. So that's just a kind of a little precursor to the welfare walks that we've done here before as well. Um, because, yeah, you might think, oh, go for a walk. But actually, when you set off, you don't mm. really know what you're doing. Mm. And a lot of people have said that to me. They're like, oh, when I go for a walk, I don't really know what to do. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'll walk for like five minutes and then I get bored and I come home. Yeah. Whereas well, actually, if they're taking the phone up. Yeah. But maybe that's something we can invite the people, you know, maybe listening is to try that form of activity like I think the most simple thing you do is take a walk with someone like not alone although I do think going for a walk alone is something very empowering and something everyone should do from time to time you shouldn't have a problem being alone um, particularly in the city you know there's great places to walk you know around their campus even um, but definitely being you know trying to I don't know what's a reasonable amount of minutes a, a week to clock up 180 minutes I think of it's movement supposed a week. to be 30 minutes a day 30 minutes a day of some form of exercise okay okay and that's as simple as gardening it's walking it's cycling it's you know into the gym it's yeah. whatever you want um well i come to you abby uh how much would you walk a week a day Oh, I don't know. I'm not the biggest exercise girly, but no. my, my New Year's resolution was to walk more, to walk be fair. More. Yeah, it was. So like, instead of getting picked up from the bus stop, that's like, say, 10 minute walk from my house, I'll walk now. I'm I'm trying to be less lazy. You're not getting a lift to the bus stop, are you not? No, not okay. anymore. Okay. So, or, or I'll like walk, I'll like walk around the city or whatever. Okay. okay. That's good. Um, Unless it's dark, like Emer, yeah, I don't yeah, walk I in the dark. That's... It's not my thing. Yeah. yeah. No way. I know, uh, like, when, when I'm not moving, like, you know, and... Like, like any form when, when I do exercise I feel so much better I feel so much more confident so much more relaxed um, I know you're probably you're there at least here at the moment Nisha uh, what's what do you like when you're not moving like, and how do you feel after it like you know after, after exercise or being active I just really enjoy it I think it's great for my mental health um, yeah. like when I was younger I suffered with mm. mental health issues and playing on a team was always something that kind of brought out the positive mm. and my team is always very open about it but it's like a support system and a way to uh, get fit and just feel better and like mm. you sleep better after it you feel um, more energised it's just all around a great way mm. to keep your mental health in check I, like I, I, I suppose like no one's going to argue with you that exercise is not good for your well-being and mental health. What do you, what's our advice to students who maybe aren't in, involved in a team or um you know maybe a bit nervous to get going or maybe like like we use Abby's footsteps as an example like looking to be more active this year and to follow on that vein. Any any advice from 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 you guys or what advice can you give the student? Maybe start with you and Nisha. I'd say up. start small be realistic about what you're going to do mm. like even if it's you walk 10 minutes a day mm. where you hadn't any little helps and then if you enjoy it you'll build it up more to, and then maybe eventually you decide you want to join some sport mm. but like be kind to yourself like don't rush yourself into something because then that puts pressure on you and mm. it is more distressing whereas if you just start small with something you think you'll enjoy um, and then work your way up okay. I haven't got the lorry yet, so um, I was just gonna. Ooh, yeah. I was just gonna add before that. Yeah. Um, also, like it, it's important to remember you're in college, and in yeah. college you get to ex experiment. No, yeah, yeah. Ooh, well, yeah. no, you do. Yeah. But ooh, la, la. but like all our clubs and societies. So mm. if you do want to be active, like we have loads of different sports teams, and um, some are competitive, but some are not. And if mm. you want to try it, um, this is your time to try it yeah. for free, yeah. which you're not going to be able to do when you're an adult. Um, mm. Well, when you're you're probably an adult right now, but <laughs> <laughs> but oh so so if you are a bit like anxious about trying something new, well, there's loads of people trying something new in college, so yeah. might as well try it now. Yeah, and be be just be bold and brave to try it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, especially in college, everyone has the same kind of mindset, and mm. everyone, like, 
I don't know, we have um, a volleyball team there. Some of them are not competing. So try yeah. it out yeah. or do That's some fun. badminton. Yeah. And mm. you want to try rugby? Try rugby. Give I don't know. Go, yeah, yeah we've got loads. you got rock climbing there. we got rock climbing. Well. Oh. And table tennis, tennis. <laughs> she's, plot- yeah. she's just like plugging everything. Stop yeah, I'm rugby. like, oh, what else, what else do we have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I think that's good advice. Um, mm-hmm. I, I maybe add to that, it's finding something, like finding like, it's this whole movement, they'll find your tribe, like, find your community that you're part of. Like, how do you just try and find something? Yeah. You know, don't be, don't be afraid to get yeah. out of your comfort zone a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it also, it gets you to uh, meet people outside of your classroom. Mm-hmm. Which is important. And, yeah, people who have different mindsets than you and yeah. might probably will bring a lot to your life, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Laura? And the being active thing for me, I would agree with Abby, I am trying to do more. I mm. want to get, I know me and the girls were talking as well about hobbies and stuff. I think when you get mm. older, you just kind of get into routine, you're in a nine to five. But, uh, and, uh, you this, don't have a this hobby. This tees up a, a, a great point that it's probably relevant for a lot of students, particularly girls, uh, and probably a lot of lads as well, where t- their time in team sports is, is over. Like, you know, yeah. they're not going to probably get into competitive sports, but what? Like, not even so, like so, so, so what's on offer then like how do you get those how do you get that 30 minutes a day multiplied by five or six whatever that, that adds 100 and 200 minutes a yeah day a like week. it could be just going out listening to music maybe walking somewhere we're doing your returns at lunch sometimes in the stores doing your returns like your sales. Zara sales <laughs> and stuff like that yeah. um, even just it does. it's not necessarily I know the one that we're talking about at the moment is being active and um like getting out and exercise. You do a lot of walking in the evenings. Like, would you? Yeah, like I'd get out. Like my like escape would be to get out because I'm beside the sea and stuff, mm. and I love the fresh air out by my way. But then when mm. I'm coming to town, maybe I'm just I want to get away from the desk. Yeah. Going around town and trying to breathe in the air here is like it's not as good as yeah. back back yeah. home as such. But I feel like we've all touched on teams and like being involved. Maybe not a sports team, but like a team in general. Like all of us wouldn't be here if we all didn't, didn't get involved with college and the student union is a team. Mm. The student experience team is obviously a team and um, um, but other things like there's stuff to get involved in as I only touched on class reps or clubs and socks but there's class reps there's peer mentors mm. it's stuff that you can do to get involved and to meet people and then having that confidence to maybe go to yeah. an event to meet more people that you're with mm. people you have experience with Um I always think working on a team is always going to be beneficial to you in the future to apply to a workplace or to be able to have the experience to say mm. I'm a good team member or I'm a team leader yeah. um, working with other people and stuff like that so a bit of going off topic with the mm. active but like but what's, the, what's your thoughts and like just as you're talking there as well it's, uh, I'm kind of thinking mm. there's a lot to be said for just having a really not just a busy day but an active day where yeah. like your help like uh, on campus there's always someone need the hand to move a sofa there's always yeah. someone need the hand to get stuff from a different room to this room and yeah. it, you know being involved in things walking into campus from a certain point so just being really busy during the daytime and you know be, being as helpful as you can to people yeah. who need help in you know in different aspects and like the energy you use just a day on campus is is, is monstrous yeah. isn't it like, I feel like it's always some kind of psychology thing like if you're doing something good or if you're helping someone you automatically feel good mm-hmm. about yourself or like that you've been productive with your day you haven't just maybe sat at your desk and done emails or like you've helped people you've gone out of the college you've done yeah. stuff and um, like you are actively trying to yeah. Maybe help people, and then your day goes quicker. Time so flies. maybe, like, I, I, I maybe change number two instead of being active is being busy. Like, is that there's a lot to be said for that? Like, yeah. I don't mean it. Like, the like people saying I'm not being active. They think they're putting on the gym leggings and they think about getting the sweat. But actually, just being here, being being on the toes and being yeah. around campus and being attentive in class and going to the library, doing a bit of study, and like all that actually clocks up into energy, doesn't it? Like, mm-hmm. you'd, you'd be pretty pooped after a day like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, even thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I don't know. Would anyone like to add in anything, or maybe like like hacks, you know, around like this is obviously practical advice for. Our lovely students to you know to take into the term and um, to help stay you know on top of their 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 own wellness even even in college like take the stairs over the lifts like it's the small little things you know, like <laughs> sprint sprint yeah. but sprint from Main Street to Castle Street again. <laughs> no but like that kind of thing it's you're wondering oh, where can I get the steps in like there's yeah. enough stairs in this building to get from the common room true, down yeah. to the ground floor and if you did that twice or three times a day yeah. like that's yeah. still getting steps in somehow if you've walked from your bus and instead of like being lazy and getting the lift up just keep walking like you've been walking for 10 minutes mm. from your bus stop maybe just what's another mm. carry all your books in the bag 
like the <laughs> 20 <laughs> books <That's your> <laughs> for the day. <laughs> like a farmer's walk with all, the, um, with all the books. Okay. Um, right. Uh, I, I really like that one. Um, the next one, point three on the um, Jigsaw Five a Day for Mental Health is a, a point called Taking Notice. Um, probably something I would score myself pretty low on, um, but I'm actively trying to improve it, yeah, which is the which is what we're trying for with our growth mindsets here. Um, so we can all get caught up in the relentless busyness of modern life. Uh, we can become intoxicated with the chatter of the mind, certainly so, for a lot of students. And how often are we mindful as opposed are we mindful as opposed to mindful? Okay, so busy mind versus being present of what's going on. So do we take a moment to focus what's going on within us? So sense of how we're feeling, our energy, our focus, our mood, um, and what's going on in the, in the nature around us. So essentially stepping out of ourselves from for couple of moments each day and um, to see um you know how, how we're doing and it does work wonders for our mental health and i think for 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 our own kind of social um uh, you know dilemmas because there's, there's sometimes you're, you know you're caught up in something and it's like it's just an email it's mm -hmm. you know I'm, well it, you it's, just a, it's not today it's tomorrow like, mm -hmm. like you know this person maybe there's something else going on they're not just you know trying to delay me on something or and i think it's really really important to step out so by being taking notice being mindful it freezes up from dwelling on the past or worrying about the future and we're i suppose essentially living in the moment of where we are now so what their points are taking notice of where you are now and how you feel right now what buildings your views you have um are you, you know, do you have access to each day taking time to look up and look at the beauty of the staff members around you. Oh, no, sorry. Wow. That's, uh, of, the, uh, of your surroundings, should I say. Um, you can draw, take a photo, you can journal, you know, you can notice the colours around you, things like that. Um, noticing smells, tastes, sights and sounds of the everyday experience, particularly in the city. We get lots of that. And um, reconnecting with your body. So sometimes I would do that when I'm feeling a bit wound up. I'll, cr I'll scrunch my toes to kind of hurt myself and remind myself that I'm standing and like that that's kind of a trigger for me to kind of hey, take a breath, take stock and so forth uh, and paying attention to the, you know, the different senses that you have. So um, taking notice, um, I think you're first off the mark there, Nisha. Do you take notice? Are you actively, or what, what would you score yourself in? Would you be someone to take stock daily, a couple of times throughout the day or is it just something that you're generally naturally good at or what, what, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think I'd score myself a four. Um, I do have a journal that makes me take notice of okay. like relationships, finances, mm. daily stuff every mm. day. And then even I went on a hike the other day and me and my friends just stood there looking at the view and we were like, why is no one else stopping to... They were all just speeding by or mm. like no one else cared. We were like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. But like also I think it's great to take notice, especially the way you said if you're bogged down on something that isn't that important, mm. that you need to kind of think, will this matter? in a week will it matter in a yeah. month will it matter in a year and yeah. if the answer is no to any of them then why are you so bothered yeah um but like just to kind of be mindful of yourself and all the stuff around you because there's so much stuff to enjoy yeah. outside of what's going on currently for that, though, you need that little reminder just to like I, i'm good at taking notice when i when i step out of myself but a problem i would have personally is that like i'm so um like outcome driven like you just you you want to get out you want to take the box and move mm. on to the next thing and then you know that can really drive you mad but then when you kind of say oh, like hold a second mm. like, like no one's dying here like you know this it's a <laughs> you know it's just a it's a spreadsheet or it's a report or if it's an email or if it's a spreadsheet or a, a, a document whatever it might be not the end of the world like mm -hmm. you know so but how do you train yourself to when because when you're in that fight or flight mode in your brain you can't switch it off it's quite difficult so it's 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 maybe figuring out how to do that because i'd i'd be like opposite I think to you Nisha like I probably score myself a one I'm so bad at taking in okay stopping for a minute and taking in what's happening like I probably would be that person that would nearly walk past the viewing point that you're probably there for in the first place probably because you live there in house probably <laughs> <laughs> I, live, I just Why? find I don't Why know I'd be similar to you maybe not outcome per se but I'm always fixated on stuff that I've done could I've done something better could I've done it different or if there's something that's coming up I know all my attention and focus tends to go to something that's coming up and I forget about what I'm actually doing day to day I'm always thinking of the next thing and not mm. appreciating what I, ha I have now or absorbing what's around me I kind of just go about my day mm. okay. thinking about the next thing but it's something mm. that I definitely want to work on is like what you said like 
taking in the view when it's there. It's something so simple and appreciating and, and journaling. That's something I don't do. It's just I go to the next thing or I'm worrying about did I do the right thing last week? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think even even looking out there, we've loved you viewing our window here. Like you know, it's taking taking notice of that. You're probably doing it in small doses in different ways, but um, yeah, I don't think everyone is, you know, in this group is caught up too much. Mm-hmm. Like we would take notice of each other, and um, you know, even as you know, it's, it's as simple as what they're wearing that day. You take notice of, the, of their energy, or maybe you might, might be, take notice that they're a bit off, and you're checking in with them. And yeah. like, it, it, those little things are important that people are noticing you as well. Um, and you know the people around you. We have a large team in our SU, and it's, sometimes it's hard to take Get notice everyone. of them yeah. because they're just it's so, so broad. So it's trying to be a bit more mindful. And I think I mentioned it earlier about getting out of the office for a bit and just being here and being mm-hmm. present and just seeing what the energy is like off people and, and and seeing where they're at. I think I probably would have scored myself like a one probably last year but I think being on a team like the SU that's kind of high performing it gets intense mm. at times it makes you like you have to stop and you have mm. to take notice of not just yourself but everyone around you to be like is this person in a position that I can ask this of them right now and am I in a position to do something for someone else I think mm. being on teams like that like this one like we get into intense situations with each other sometimes I think being able to look around the room and kind of take notice of where everyone is is vital because otherwise things won't get done mm. so I think mm. being in those situations makes you kind of step back and think like evaluate the whole situation so give me give, give me maybe two or three actions that we can maybe practice as a team because it seems to be something but Barry Nisha who's the expert uh, <laughs> scoring quite low on what, what you know as a group what could we be doing or you know, put ourselves in the, in the shoes of a student what could they be doing to be maybe take notice more and not get caught up like you know from the, from the day to day well, Iona did a great example today. We all said we'd wear blue, and her version of blue is not blue, which Here we all we noticed. Again. We all we all noticed that. So this that's has a good start. That's all the first time now. I've started to notice things. But no, more more in, in terms of a student context. Like, like, what could they do to be more take more notice when they're on campus, and more notice of the people around them, or whatever it might be. Like just simple steps for like I'm scoring myself a one. Also, what can I do to be more mindful? to take notice you even, should like, stop uh, and um, admire the view <laughs> I think is like a view. pretty easy one I found myself doing that on um, the way to college on the, or on the way in or on the way home even I've even noticed the last couple of evenings I've been in the kitchen and I've gone out I have a, little, a small little balcony um, just off the kitchen in the apartment and I've gone out and I've just watched the sunset and I'm not there for like an hour watching it but even just like a minute and I don't go on mm. my phone and I just stand there and I just watch it mm. Um with no interruptions and no, just yeah, and deep just, breaths type of thing yeah and yeah. it's really now it's not as quiet as back home because I can still hear like <laughs> all the buses <laughs> um, but um yeah no I think just stopping in and mm. taking the view and also I've I've also kind of tried to I, I tried to be very self-aware um but sometimes I find myself being like oh my god everyone is being so annoying today and I've learned especially in the last year to kind of stop and been like okay is everyone really annoying today or am I just tired mm. or am I just hungry or am I just stressed? Yeah. It's normally the hunger. But I think, I think then this, the, the, the step that I would recommend is to just stop and like take a minute, whether that is to stop and take a minute and watch the view or stop and take a minute and evaluate your reaction to, so, to someone, to how someone's behaving at the minute. Um, because the whole world isn't against you, You're, you could just need a bite to eat or yeah. just a, a couple of minutes of breath work. Yeah. I'd like to add, before I'm not going to jump in, is just like the, the breathing for me is I like to take three deep breaths just at a time during the day to kind of just take stock of myself and just to be like, notice that Jace today is crazy or this is a lot of energy going on here or whatever it might be and I think that's that's important that kind of sets me up for taking mm-hmm. in a, a, a sight or taking in a, an experience or taking notice of you know the, maybe the people around me or what, my, what it might be um, and one one tip kind of on that thing as well I know you said you scrunch your toes I, I do the same as well but I also I read it in a book like years ago like I think when I was like 10 and it was like this like young adult fiction kind of book and I think the the character was going for therapy and um the, the tip that the therapist gave was to take a minute and think where can you visualize the anxiety you're feeling mm. and I would get mine a lot in my stomach so now mm. I think I, 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 I visualize the anxiety in my stomach as like a black um, like hole kind of thing mm. and I, I imagine myself like dispersing that and like releasing the tension and it actually does help if you put that like visual um, in your mind um, mm. and it's kind of nice to disperse that mm. yeah. so I think that's, that's a pretty good tip helps you kind of box it in and you can yeah Face it head on. Okay. 
Uh, I was just going to jump in that last piece there. Uh, I would be kind of more like Nisha as well, where I do take a lot of the stuff in now, but I wasn't always like that. For me, it was always about what's next, what's next, what's next. Mm. And then I could never remember what I've actually done. And it was never, you you wouldn't feel satisfied mm. because you don't know what you've done. Mm. And you're always just looking at next, next, next. And it's like the future's uncertain. So the present is here now. So you try and enjoy that as much as you can. Yeah. Mm. And to kind of touch point on what Emer was saying there, um, interestingly enough, you have more nerves in your gut than any other area in your body. That's why you always feel in your gut first. So they say mm. gut feeling. Mm. So if you are feeling stressed out, your body is going to tell you. Mm. Listen to your body. Like we all experience different types of stresses in different areas of our body. More often than not, you'll feel in your gut, your stomach first. You'll feel like different kind of stress or anxiety in the back of your neck. Your sh- One of your shoulders will hurt a bit more than the other. Mm. Your toes, your calf, your knee. Like your body will tell you. Yeah. So what's going on? What's going on? So just listen to your body. Okay. Yeah. Right, um, the fourth point there, uh, a very interesting one, and I suppose it ties in with your all your lovely New Year's resolutions <laughs> and uh, where you're all at in terms of improving things, is keeping on learning. So uh, continue to learn, exposes us to new ideas, helps us stay curious and engaged. It might also give us a sense of accomplishment, which in turn can boost our own confidence. Learning does not necessarily have to involve lectures and books and being in the library. Um, it can often take place through getting involved in it community a new club or society it can be you know taking up a, a an event or anything in you know in the college but um it can also give you a chance to rediscover an old hobby that you've lost track of perhaps so um i suppose keep learning definitely something i'm keen to do this year i haven't figured out what it is i want to learn yet but um some of the things that uh jigsaw have recommend is getting involved in your community joining a local history group tidy towns um anything in your local surroundings perhaps taking up an instrument or learning to dance i own it lovely that could be you uh cook something new i already know how to dance (laughs) (laughs) share some recipes um if you guys want to cook bake or if you want to do some bacon definitely bring it in and you can pick up tips from each other and learn how to change a wheel on your car or to wear a plug or you can even do some crafts or juggle um, but oh, learning well. keeping on learning I do think that the whole growth mindset you know taking on new things is um, is, is, is definitely something you can do but um, I'm going to go to Ryan first and then we might go around to cool. how um, I, I'm going to score myself on this keep on learning I, I'd like to think I'm someone who likes to learn um, I've not got anything in I'm going to give myself a two but I, I've, 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 I've a lot to go but I do want to learn some new skills this year I don't know what the skills are um, uh, actually sorry DIY stuff I'm trying to pick up the old DIY I got a lovely mm. drill set for Christmas you know so I'm <laughs> wow. um, that was just I'm very wow. dangerous at the moment because I've got nice, a drill I don't nice. know what to do with it but I've got to do something with it you want to break so, yeah. so I'm going to be in a zone to get curious and learn and sit down and deep focus on it and, and, and see what I can do but you're probably a better story Ryan you're, you're in the learning zone at the moment and it kind of came out of nothing as well Okay, it was we were on like one of our morning meetings and I think we were waiting for you to join so we were all just catching up and it had gone quiet and I was like I'll start the entertainment and I started to juggle and raise I actually can't juggle mm. and it's something that I was like do you know what I want to learn how to juggle mm. and it's so, so, it's so <laughs> simple <laughs> but like it's the idea of I want to learn a new trick it's I want to learn it's very it's easy it's to. not like out of anyone's like people do it it's not an impossible mm. task it's not like learning a, a new language or something like that yeah. it's a reasonable task and I think doing reasonable learning <laughs> and not overachieving like trying to aim for something that's completely and it's fun I think it keeps your it, keep, it keeps your brain stimulated I think it's we're getting great crack out of like you and failing but like you, you're, 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 <laughs> a, you're accountable to us so yeah. and I think you're telling us and I think like regardless of what you're doing it's you're telling us you're doing it and we're checking in on you so you have to do it the pressure's on you and that yeah. keeps the entertainment going so I think fun things like that are whatever as novel as they might be I think are, are, are great and like, that's what more people should be doing mm-hmm. not necessarily juggling but it could be something <laughs> as basic as a recipe like how are you getting on with that tiramisu Laura I'm still waiting for, I actually am waiting for tiramisu <laughs> but um, you know, we all can't wait to share yeah. it and I think when you're doing it with a group whatever it might be I think it's it's, it's really fun to, to do so I think you know what that should look like is once a month you should try a new recipe bring it whether it's mm-hmm. bacon or cooking bring it in and what makes it even better is and everyone gets the benefit if you share the food with people yeah. or share 
connecting even, with others. Even your failures, <laughs> if you toast the life out of the thing, like, you know, even that's fun, like, you know, although you might the get around. can up, explode. Is, is, is that like once a month, is that something easy for everyone to do, like, whether it be a so. recipe or a, a yeah. thing? Juggling balls, juggling pens, juggling axes, juggling anything. Oh. <laughs> Start off step. small, remember what that's we said earlier? Start, Start off small, small and then we get somewhere. Get yeah. the, the, the juggler delegated emails and you should be checking the, the internet. They are actually. They are all, that, I'm a class juggler with that yeah. stuff. But um, recipes, uh, anyone got any, maybe any, any new skills? Sorry, is anyone else learning a new skill? Anyone knitting? MBA, sorry. <laughs> no, um, but I get bored really easily, right? No, no yeah. way, really. <laughs> I do. Not, uh, not everybody on it. So I always like, I'm always learning stuff. Yeah. I'm always getting well, like... I'll give you a five on that, anyway. you're probably a six because you are... Yeah, but I don't. Very, d- she forgets a lot of the stuff and has to read. No, <laughs> I don't forget, but I don't go like I don't become an expert in anything. I just learn Mediocre. loads of different Jack stuff. Of yeah. yeah, okay. Because I get upset. How's that Korean going? Remember you were learning well, Korean. I know a couple words. Go, so. a, Come on, then. Please don't. Please don't. I actually, please don't. right now, I don't know any words. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to insult okay, anyone. So, we'll, we'll, uh, to kind of back her up on that, there is that you know. I've heard that saying where it's like jack of all trades and a master of none but it's the actually, finished version is yeah. is still about um, still what it's still better than a master of one right yeah. so technically yeah she's yeah. outskilled us all yeah, yeah. No, but no, i no. i always learn like i like l- watching different types of tv so i pick up on their language really quickly and then i get a bit obsessed with that but that's so. in your nature so but, but you sit down and say okay i want to learn something this month this week or do we just yeah. say i'm not i'm just kind of bored i want to do something well i think i I think I get curious of some yeah. uh, about okay. something, and then I become a bit not obsessive, but mm. I like to learn a no, bit just more about it. To yeah, to so I've I've done master. yeah, and I do that with like languages, or I do that with like mm. um, crafts, or yeah. even recipes. I like cooking. Like I've always done that, so mm. I'm constantly. So this is perfect because like, I kind of wanted to jump in on that point. So for her, her habit and her goal would be linked. Her goal is to you know do something mm. but the habit is to always kind of try something new so it's the habit that leads you to your goal and this is what i was going to talk about in this section was that it's actually not just about like saying oh i want to learn this skill mm. it's like well what are you actually going to do to achieve that mm. and a lot of people like you know especially this time of year new year resolutions and all this kind of stuff why it fails is because people focus on the end goal mm. like they're like oh in three months time i want to learn how to do this it's like well how are you going to do it what are the little habitual things? What are the things you're going to do on a daily? Like if you're going to start walking, let's say you want to be able to run for an hour. Well, you're not going to be able to do that in one day. So you have to be able to run for a minute, mm. then run for five minutes. Mm. So what are the to... habits that are, you know, going to get you there? And what we're talking about here about like, you know, the accountability and things like that ties in with your habits that will increase your goal. Like Ryan knows now that we're going to give him just as much abuse as we did for your tomatoes <laughs> if he doesn't get the juggling done. I yeah. actually got the tomatoes as well, so uh, well, no abuse needed. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so and, and it keeps you kind of engaged in yeah. the thing as well, mm. that because it's becoming part of your routine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. Um, yeah, so like, uh, I suppose learning like is, like, it's, it's a mindset of being curious. Uh, like, how do you... Like maybe people who maybe aren't learning, I suppose everyone's in college so they're learning at some level, but how do you, like what's a tangible task for a run of the mill student who says like, you know, geez, I need to be brain to be stimulated or to be overreaching with something that's kind of get them excited and get them, get their mind kind of stimulated. Like, you know, maybe Nisha, Ema, or whatever. There's actually a model to okay. tell you how to set your goals and it's called SMART. SMART, okay. And um, so it's it should be a specific task. It should be measurable, attainable, realistic, and then you should have a time constraint on it. So like, when are you going to have achieved this? Mm. And that's how you should figure out all your tasks or yeah. goals so that you can keep track of them. A trial that has it. Uh, yeah and we've got a vision board goal setting workshop kind of set yes. up for next week we should hope uh, everyone can subtle plug, can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little plug for you. drop into that so yeah I, I, I think that's important um, and but sometimes not to, not to go back into it but how do you know what you want to do as well like you know it's like you know how, how do you find it like, like like me for example I, I, I want to do something I want to learn I, I'm prepared to do put a time bound be and use the smart principle with it and all that jazz but I don't know what I want to do like you know and then it's just finding that so how do you stay curious and you know open or how do you find what it is that you don't know what you want to do you need to do trial and error and you need yeah. to be yeah. okay with failure as well. mm. yeah, yeah. Like, the, your comfort zone we, we joke about like, the juggling thing I'm going to now do it but 
it just came out of nowhere. And joke. In, me improvising with someone, then a joke. And it's like, actually, do you know what? That wouldn't be yeah. bad. Sometimes you can overthink what you want to do and overthink mm. if something could be popular at the moment and you think, oh, maybe I'll try getting with the crowd and yeah. getting ahead. But you're not actually that interested, so yeah. you give up. I think sometimes it's a bit of... A Does TikTok stuff. give you inspiration? Like just no. Like gen- I don't no. actually have TikTok. No, no, no. no. It, can, it, it can. It does. It does. There's, lo- there's lots of things. Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing about that is um, I think we, with goals that we put uh, in like every January um, which is great and we should do it but I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as well especially with like learning things mm. because you're, you're not going to know if you actually like what you're about to start until you yeah. start it and then if you committed to it but then you don't enjoy it and then you don't end up achieving that goal you then that's a negative yeah, yeah. But that it's, would put it's, you off starting something it, exactly like, oh, Jesus, uh, there's too weeks. much pressure for that yeah. when yeah. essentially it like it is curiosity and you just have to try it and if you mm. like it you like it and if you don't you move to the next one yeah. it's okay not to like it and it's, <laughs> it's okay, okay to be bad at it yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think similar to what Iona was saying like we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves in January and I think that's another thing that about Blue Monday is that a lot of people have failed their resolutions at that point mm. so that's kind of bogging them down as well as they wanted to achieve something and they didn't or they gave up on it or they didn't enjoy it or whatever but we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves at the start of the year when you can pick up a new hobby or you can set a new goal at any point any thought, throughout yeah, the year yeah. it doesn't you don't yeah. have to start on a Monday or the first of January yeah. or anything like that. You can do it whenever you want. Like do you think that's really important to, to take the pressure off yourself off to yourself, not yeah. to not really constrain your time to yeah. like the start of the year. Okay. Okay, well uh, that's some, some good nuggets of uh, advice and information there. Our last point there uh, for all our listeners here is giving uh, for part of the Jigsaw Five a day for our mental health. So doing good is good for us. Helping others makes us feel needed and valued. This can reinforce social connectedness and give us a sense of purpose. It also benefits us, uh, those who help um, at the wider community in general by contributing more compassionate society. So giving can be simple, spontaneous and acts such as paying a compliment or holding the door for someone um, you know can be beneficial um, it, it, it can be more structured and significant commitments such as volunteering as well so their advice from uh, Jigsaw here is you can is a, it's a this is a really a, is as basic as this smiling with someone in the supermarket in the car park even in you know the college um, I try to do on a regular basis to meet students with a, you know with a smile it's always the important I think from air roles in the student services team um, which places an experience we offer and, sorry, these can be places of stress for people uh, and tensions. Smiling increase their sense of well-being and pass the positivity on. What more could you want than that? Um, giving a compliment. We, I don't think that's something we do on this team too often, unfortunately. Um, maybe we'll do more of it. Maybe that's my new uh, lesson. Maybe new there. skill I want to learn. Um, if you see someone with grey hair, oh. Grey hair. <laughs> grey, says grey. Oh. Silver. Silver. <laughs> um, silver. Or shoes or with a lovely coat, tell them. Um, unfortunately, I own a, uh, that jumper. You have Again, on the green get that. jumper. It feels it's great true. to receive a compliment, but You'll also see the feels fabulous to yes, give, give one and make <laughs> someone's day. You can also do something nice for a friend or a neighbour. You can send them a gift. You can pick up their shopping or drop them around some baking, Laura. Did you hear that? Yeah? Um, you can also volunteer with a local yeah. group or do some charity work. You can, there's a link to various volunteer organisations but giving forward giving I'm, I'm, I'm more of a giving out than a giving forward but uh, I'm going to have to give forward <laughs> more <out>. <laughs> but um, giving you know what's our thoughts um, is I, I think we all we're all very good at smiling I think the people were generally upbeat and positive <laughs> we're good um, smilers we're good smilers yeah. <laughs> it'll bring us on to our last point that we'll talk about next but um, I'll, I'll save that for the end but giving in general like is a, I think we're all very good givers we you know mm. we do a lot for a community here we do a lot for people I, I would probably put us all in five plus bracket here I don't think there's anyone who's taking 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 we're, we're generally mm. contributors to groups and you know environments but I do think it's super important I don't know mm. um, is anyone trying to do more compliments is anyone trying to do more good things for their family for their neighbours um, for people around them it's always nice I think to see as cringe as it is to see someone else smile yeah. like I'm definitely someone who, I'm not the biggest like person to get gifts I don't really know how to deal with people giving me gifts mm. and I'm not the biggest fan of it but I love putting a smile on someone else's face yeah. if it's family or friends or even people like mm. you talk about we're, like all of us here are big like givers in our community and like I get satisfaction hearing 
about other people's satisfaction. Mm. Like when students come up and say, "Oh, you've made my day today." You're yeah. a new student. Like that's rewarding. And it's so easy to do. It, a lot of senses. It's just it's just you being, know, being present, present, listening to them, yeah. them or helping them out. You're going. Yeah, like it's it's real. Like that's what I get satisfaction from. Like I, I love just putting like these people are coming from all around the world. Mm. They're they're out of their comfort zone, and we're in our comfort zone now. Yeah. This is our time to make them comfortable. So I definitely think we all do a really good job, especially in this team. I know the yeah. students' union guys do it as well yeah. um, and you'll see that on the blue Monday to change that yeah. stigma away from being in your own self we want to bring you out and be happy yeah mm. I think I, sorry I'm just going to jump in there I also think that um, well when it comes to us anyway um, we're good at giving because we're also good at reading a room and reading people mm. and so like I feel like we can tell when somebody wants to talk or needs to talk or yeah. needs I don't know someone to tell a joke or something yeah. like that and um, whether it's students or if it's outside and we're in the shop and you can see a little lady and um, mm. she can't reach the top i feel like will <laughs> will she have to be how tall how short she's, is this she's short okay <laughs> <laughs> but like i feel like we're we're the type of people that wow. we won't we won't like shimmy shimmy away from that situation yeah. you know <laughs> it's, it's been a, it's yeah. been a long day i was really taking this dancing thing seriously <laughs> <laughs> just dancing in all contexts it's one of my goals okay. shimmy but, but just uh, I suppose more practically mm. what can a run of the mill student in the college be doing to give forward like you know and day to day on campus in their lives you know what what, what advice maybe have you so uh, you this is give? something that um, I not, not recently but like within the last like six seven months I would say um because I'm not one for like resolutions and things like that. I've never done that. Sat down and written out a resolution of something that I want to do over the year. But occasionally throughout the year, like every now and again, something will come up and it will want me to actively change. Mm. And one of the things last year was um, my dad had been listening to like a an Islamic lecture by some scholar. And he said to me after it, he's like, I heard this guy say something and I haven't been able to forget it. And it was that give people the gift of the benefit of the doubt. And he's like, don't assume the worst. Assume excuses for the person. Assume that there's something gone wrong and there's a reason why something has gone one way and excuse them of their ill behavior. And to me, like, that was just like, okay, so if someone does something and it annoys me, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. If I'm driving and someone cuts me off, if someone does something stupid, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. And it's like, as soon as I started doing that, boom, my stress, like, things just kind of, like like water off a duck's back. Mm. It was just like off my head. So if it is something that you want to actively start doing to kind of, you know, reduce the stress on yourself, if you're in class and maybe your you know group mates aren't pulling their weight, or maybe you're on the way home mm. and there's someone being loud on the bus, or maybe you're on the on the walk and someone's being you know rude or loud, don't assume that that person's just a bad person. Mm. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, well, don't internalize it. it don't internalize yeah. it. It's not about you. Very rarely are things actually yeah. about us. Okay. And I think give a, them the benefit of the doubt. It's a good one to pay forward. Um, and the person doesn't even yeah. probably know you're doing that. Exactly. Um, but if we're to go back to it, maybe that's probably an internal thing that you you know people wouldn't be aware of. But how do you make someone else feel good? So if I'm being rude to you, you're not actually giving me anything. So or maybe you know how do you spread the kindness or spread the love? Like um, maybe other <laughs> advice. Oh no! For, well, in that case, yeah, I kind of back up what you're saying. Like you do kind of have that positive outlook, and you do smile at people when you interact with them, give them positive reinforcement when you meet people on the street as you're walking by that you're not just walking around a big scowly face on you and you're just giving off that negative uh, kind of image. Mm -hmm. But if you are around campus and someone greets you with a hello, greet them back with a hello, you know? Okay. Give and the gift of kindness. And a smile. And a smile. Okay, so I want one action, one, one giving forward action each uh, that oh. you're going to maybe recommend our students to. Start with you, Iona. Oh. Smiling um, is gone. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no. <laughs> Getting things off shelves. No. Um, I... I I think being present, like in uh, with the people around mm. you at that time, yeah, yeah, that's a good um, point, yeah. because you'll end up giving something yeah, by no. being present. I They're think giving them the like the active, respect. active listening. Yeah. yeah. Um. Laura. Um, I think for me, I've always said it. I love celebrating like the little things, like every little thing that you might see happening with someone, or even in the common room, or if like you love a girl's outfit, like say it to them. Yeah. Or like you get a coffee from somewhere and it's free because it's your 10th coffee like it's a good thing and it's going to be a good day and then when you change as um, Hamza said about body language and stuff if you're closing yourself off and like looking like you're not approachable in the common room and stuff people are going to feel that off you so just mm. going around smiling is taken um, <laughs> but like again being <laughs> being present and stuff and just mm. 
enjoying everything that you're doing in college? Yeah, Robert. Um, I think my one is probably a little bit more complicated in that it's more time-consuming um, and maybe not in- entirely possible for everyone. But I think if you can, I think everyone should be able to volunteer at mm. some stage in their life in some mm. sort of capacity. Yeah. Um, it's something that I really miss doing and I'm just too busy at the moment in doing my thesis and um, student yeah. union and working and stuff. Um, but, I, but it is something I really miss. Like I did um, a few different types of volunteering um, when I was younger and I just think it's it, it just gave me so many different perspectives on life mm. and what other people kind of daily life is and um, so I think people have the time um, and it can be something suited to you like I did kind of it, it can start in college yeah like you could be volunteering to give a hand with you know a project uh, an event or yeah. like as a student group or a club or society or a student union thing yeah it can be something you're passionate about I know like one of the girls on the student union um, volunteers um, to walk dogs at the do, uh, Sophie Sophie at the I do- want to do that what is it, what is it? The, the DSPCA yeah, yeah. which skill that's yeah. <laughs> which, <laughs> which like probably wouldn't be for me I love dogs but I still wouldn't be like something that I would particularly want to do yeah. but there, there's volunteering opportunities out there for everyone like even mm. in a charity shop if you're really into clothes matching different outfits that maybe other people won't see like two random mm. pieces of clothing but you might have a good eye for that mm. and there's, there's things for everyone so I definitely think someone when everyone should experience volunteering at some stage in some capacity in their lifetime I think it's such a worthwhile experience okay um, to give back Nisha. I think in the college a kind of really simple thing you could do is ask someone to sit with you if they're alone in the common room if someone's standing mm. move down offer them to sit beside you if you're playing the playstation ask someone if they want to play with yeah. you I think, I think that's a really good one I yeah, think that's a include. very easy step and something we see all the time is you know talking to someone you don't know and uh, you know seeing how they are I think that's a really good one. Particularly over the next couple of weeks, we want to see a lot of new people here. Um, a, a really tangible way to make a difference is, is, is actually... And you feel great and they feel great. I think it's it's one that I was thinking, double win. Yeah. I think that's a great one. We're going to try that. I think, yeah. Abby? I think similar to kind of what Nisha Iona, and Laura all said about being present and stuff like that, I think if you were to go one step further, I know there's a couple of people I see it, people that come in and they don't just come in and go to class they'll come in five minutes early they'll come into the common room they'll say good morning to everybody that they know they'll say oh how are you and then you meet new people through that and every day kind of people get added to your list of people that you know people that you mm. can talk to and then never go to class, <laughs> go to class. Um, but, but taking that time when you do have five minutes as opposed to just sitting with your friends on your yeah. lunch go and speak to the, everyone that you know they might not be your closest friends yeah. but go and show show face show people that you're there and that to if they need you you're around else. yeah exactly yeah. And not for you for them Exactly, yeah. yeah. If people if people need you, then they know you're around and they know that you're willing to speak to them about anything and they can trust you and kind of stuff like that. And that kind of grows your network a little bit more. So mm-hmm. you get a wider variety of people that you can connect to with about yeah. different things. But it's having that mindset because your default is, oh, they're my pal, I want to sit and chat with them. And yeah. you don't yeah. think of that It is hard, so you do kind of have to do it on purpose. So it's, it's of, I don't want to waste being... my energy talking to them. You know, my social battery is this big. I only want to... Yeah, I want to waste that with my friends. But it's actually, well, yeah. it is a mindset. As soon as you change that, it does. Definitely. Everything does change. Uh, last one with you, Ryan, then we're going to move on to our very last point. Um, well, the student experience team love pastries and cakes, so you can give us a box of pastries and cakes. <laughs> yes. that would, very, very. Donuts, that would be lovely. Very, very, um, yeah. Always, always, always appreciate Um I'd say even, like, a smaller thing that people can do is, you kind of touched on it before as well, but, like, just smaller gestures like if you're like holding the lift for someone in the morning like sometimes I've seen people doing the opposite and they're pressing the button because they don't want someone mm. to get in the lift with them but like it could be it could have been raining out people are soaked they just want to get to where they need to go if you can just put your hand out and wait the extra 10 mm. seconds for them at the yeah. door to let them come in with you or someone's running behind you hold the door open for them yeah. that'll go a long way like they'll remember that you've done it and they see mm. it they'll return the favour the next time something small and simple Right, so the last point, um, I, and I, I, I kind of can't finish the, the, today's session without talking about this, is the, there's a really good concept developed from Jigsaw as well, which is this concept of the, the one good adult. So uh, this refers to an adult uh, who a young person can turn to if they are in need of support. Um, the theme of one good adult emerged from a survey that they, that, that they carried out. Um, and they essentially said that by, by the one good adult supporting young people in their life by listening to them and giving them time and space to open up and not judging them can have profound impact on their life. Um, and I think it if we are to take anything away from the five a day for mental health is that everyone has the capacity to be the one good adult in anyone's life at any given time and um, it might not be you know you might not be the only one good adult in their life but 
you could be that person at that time for that person when they really, really need it. And I would like to, you know, put that as the overarching principle for all the piece you said today, where it's giving a forward, where it's being active with someone, being the connectedness. Um, I was trying to think what the other points were there. Sorry. Um, the, you know, to keep learning, taking notice, they're really, really important. But um, maybe just last few thoughts on what's the importance of being that kind of role model and that person to rely on whether it be a good friend or like a mentor or a leader or whatever it might be to people who need it and even if it's a stranger it can be as simple as t- like you said I'd be talking to someone you don't know and say how are you getting on yeah listening to their story about how hard to find in college and blah, blah blah and then saying that was me before this is what I did and sometimes you don't even need an explanation you just need to they just want to be heard like you know so um, yeah any, any, any thoughts on that? I think a really good one is just having that reassurance that someone's there for you, someone's back in your corner, you've got some kind of support, even if it's just someone asking you for an update on how that exam went or, I don't know, maybe how did that class go that you were kind of a bit nervous about. Like having someone that is back in your corner, that person might not have that at home or maybe in their upbringing, Um, but just to have someone that's looking out for them, um, a kind face, a friendly face to have, uh, no matter what any of our jobs is or roles this year. um, It's just having that for our students and just being there. And it's reminding yourself that you have the capacity it to goes a long way you ask a question yeah. like oh how did that go and they'd be like oh they care like they remembered I yeah. had this thing today um, and yeah but another thing as well is that like you always got to be in that mindset that your one interaction with that person could either be their best interaction of the day yeah. or their worst Yeah. and yeah. it's you that's going to dictate that Yeah. so you've got to be really kind of assured in what you're doing and kind of maintain that positivity and remember these yeah. kind of talking points so that when you are in that environment and that goes like even at home or with your siblings or on your team wherever you are like you know you could still be that person mm. uh, to be that one good adult in the room kind of thing I think the hard thing is stepping out of your busy day and yeah. remembering yourself like, I know I feel it a lot of times you're under mm. pressure you have deadlines you have emails coming in instant message whatsapps you know people phrasing it on the phone whatever and then you kind of you forget you're in a position of privilege here that you can talk to people and be there for them and it's reminding yourself that you have the potential to listen to someone to change their life to be there for them wherever that might be um, and everyone has that in their mm-hmm. family settings in their friend settings mm-hmm. in their college settings mm-hmm. in their project settings as well like you know which we see a lot of the time that like they're not that one good adult the one person who's kind of mm-hmm. keeping things going on but everyone has the potential for it and I think that's the real leveller that it's up to you to that's within your um, reach at, you know in, in all aspects um, still find it so weird that they like the SU for example would come to us and be like oh I want your opinion on this or like with your experience it's like mm. oh no I'm still I'm still young I'm still fun yeah. I'm not an adult yet like don't like, yeah, yeah but then they're like no no but you've and then like being here I, I studied here I was SU like I do have experience and it's like okay yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that's so weird that you're coming to me for this advice like oh I hope I can help but you forget how they see you yeah. you know you don't know how they see you so, so that's nice and it's rewarding as well, as well. it's nice yeah. to the, yeah the first time that I experienced that was at grad when people come up with their families yeah. and they're thanking you and you're like oh my god who are you, you. <laughs> I, legit that was my reaction I'm like I completely forgot who you are but it made an impact in their life and yeah. that was the moment for them I think 100%. especially being in the SU like I feel like we always get these like flash flashbacks no mm. but you don't realise how much you impact people yeah. until for example graduation and they come up to you and they present your their family to you you're like oh okay hello yes. yeah. <laughs> but, but and you're nearly uh, kicking yourself because I could have done yeah. so much more for you like, if yeah. I had been realised how, how important how yeah, much they valued the your interactions with them you know yeah agreed um, well I suppose just to, to wrap up just any maybe two or three practical steps how students themselves can practice being that one good adult for other people in their community any advice uh, in a practical sense for others to start with like obviously just being mindful of your maybe start I'll start being mindful of your um, the opportunities to listen to someone to be there for them and let them to confide in you and to share let them share their experiences with you you don't have to absorb it but like you, you just even listen to them you know can't be enough but um mm. any more you'd like to add i think it, we've said a lot of it even like in what we've said before mm. like being an active listener yeah. and things mm. like that um you'll take that role and you'll kind of realize what a person needs at that time and um, if you do listen to mm. what they're actually saying um yeah. 
But, yeah. but I think, like you said, you don't absorb it. I think you have to be conscious of what that person needs, but also be conscious yeah. of what you yourself need. Needs, yeah. Um, yeah. Like you may also not be in a state um, or a position to listen to someone's problems mm. without letting it affect you. You may have a lot going on. If they're kind of mental health related, there yeah. are support yeah. services there um, and stuff. Yeah, it's really important to know how to signpost. I've mm. done a, diff- a few different courses on consent and mental health. And the main thing... That thing that they always drill home is signposting yeah. you need to know kind of what supports are out there yeah. um which i'm sure maybe nisha now yeah. doesn't want to mention well that um, tees us up then for yeah. kind of closing talks that obviously there's some very you know sensitive issues that we maybe discussed today but like if, if if maybe you want to share some of the kind of key contacts nisha that maybe students can you know reach out to should they should they need them yeah so there is samaritans that you can um, access online at samaritans.org um, for crisis intervention and mm-hmm. therapy um, we also work with Jigsaw now they have the availability of therapy and then Nightline is online chats from 9pm till 2.30am mm-hmm. during term time or you can always drop into me on the fourth floor of Castle mm-hmm. House or email me on student.services at dbs.ie mm-hmm. and we can talk through anything and yeah. I can help arrange counselling through the college as well, uh, that's always an option for everyone yeah brilliant okay um well i think that's t- t- today's session we hope you really enjoyed uh, today's learning um obviously we did to summarize we did cover off the the five day for mental health part of our our, our blue monday um with dbs uh connecting with others being active taking notice uh keep on learning and giving forward uh, i think are the you know main principles and you know, to summarize uh, the power and bandwidth is there for everyone to be that one good adult in someone else's life so uh, we hope you can take some of the actions and some of the model today to i suppose make a difference in other people's lives and in people in their community and beyond and uh, and so forth so uh, thank you for listening and we'll see you on the next episode thank you Bye.